Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, and thank you to Algorithmic for having me. My name is Magdalena Dadella. I'm a character artist in the video games industry. Uh, I've been working in the industry for a little over 10 years now. And uh, I've had a chance to work on many awesome projects. Uh, in, uh, I worked for Ubisoft Montreal as well as Ubisoft Toronto for many years. And then also uh, uh, Gorilla Games in Amsterdam for a short time and on some film projects as well at uh, ILM Vancouver and at Framestore. And for the past year I've been back in video games mm -hmm. because in video games I can texture as well as model, which I cannot do in the films. And I'm working at IDOS Montreal on an unannounced project, so I will not be able to talk about that. <laughs> uh, so these are some of the projects I have worked on. Uh, a lot of Assassin's Creed and also Splinter Cell, Warcraft. These are some of the characters I've made over the years, both uh, professionally and uh, some personal projects. Uh, I've used Substance Painter for a little over a year now. And uh, first thing I used it for was this sort of uh, bronze rendering because I thought that that would be an awesome uh, tool for that because that's all I saw at the beginning uh, a lot of hard surface modeling and then I thought I'd try to push it a little bit on the skin as well uh, these three ladies are all rendered in a marmoset tool bag so it's all uh, real-time characters and all of it is painted in substance painter and for this presentation, I will be talking a little more in depth on how I like to use Substance Painter for uh, skin texturing. And I've made this little guy uh, in order to show you how I do that. Uh, he was also rendered in a Marmoset tool, Marmoset tool bag. So I'll go back to, here is the project. And this is what the final texture looks like. So I have several uh, texture sets. I'll concentrate on the head alone. I will not go into the clothing. So I'll solo this. Uh, one of the first things I like to do when I start working is change my environment map because by default you get this panorama map in Substance Painter which is very yellow and it changes the lighting a lot and affects your colors. So I find that the best way to look at your character is with uh, one of the studio HDRIs. And my favorite is the Studio 3 because it seems to be closest to what I see on the texture. So once you import your character into Substance Painter, it's good to check your normal map if you like what you see and if it's a bit too blurry for example I found that his nose is a bit too stretchy which is often the case and in substance you can paint your uh, normal map alone without painting the texture which is awesome and recently on substance share they have released some great uh, skin materials with the with XYZ textures so you can apply a material like that. It will show you in great detail skin. And you can change the scale of the UVs, so it's very small. And you can control your intensity. Oops, sorry, I'll show you, make this bigger so you can see what I'm doing. So you can control the range of the intensity of those materials. And if you add a black mask, you can paint out where you don't want that material. And as you can see, it also creates like, some of them create an indentation because it has also a height position setting. So you have to figure out what height do you want. It's basically like the ZBrush alphas. I also pay, use the separate layer to paint in a few like little dots, additional details 
on top of my normal map before I started painting the color. And to create the color, I find that uh, it's good to start with uh, material that's already in Substance Painter to paint uh, skin. It's one of the smart materials which comes with Substance Painter. Oops, sorry. Oh my god. So it's called the skin face material. So it looks like this. He looks like he's glowing right now. But it gives you a several useful layers, like the base color layer where you can adjust your color, a skin detail layer, which are those little white dots, which you can adjust with the UV scale. So I like to make this very small. And then uh, there is a skin pores, which is basically the same thing, just a little darker. And patches, which is like a cloud texture in Photoshop. And I like to put my AO to a very bright and dark red and tone it down a little bit. So I still see where the features are, so I don't have to switch between color and material mode. I can just concentrate on working in the color. I see where the mouth is and everything. And also with the SSS, I just make it red and tone it down. I don't know, I have, uh, oh, okay. So this is my skin base that I ended up with. And after that, I can start painting the detail or the la base layer of the face. And I start with something you, in a traditional painting, you would call mottling. So when you look at photos of the face in close up, you see a lot of uh, patches of red skin like this. And these uh, dermatoscopy images are especially useful. So I encourage you to look for them on the internet. They're not very appetizing because they're used to <laughs> look for uh, problems with the skin, the doctors use them. But I think they give you a nice idea of what the skin detail color is like in real life. So the first thing I do is create this sort of a mottling layer which looks like this. And basically I just make a new layer, make it very bright red, add a black mask. And my favorite brush for this is the dirt brush. I'm going to turn off these materials, which is this one. And I put it on the flow to about half waypoint and just go over my entire model lightly and try to switch between black and white on the mask so I paint some of it on and some of it off and add more of the detail on the cheeks, on the nose where usually you would see more redness on the face. Uh, you can find on the internet some information on the different areas of the face, that the middle part of the face is redder, the upper part is usually more yellowish, and then the lower part is more blue. It's not always the case, but it's a good guide. So once I'm done with that, like I said, I'm. I end up with this sort of layer that I like to tone down to about there. And you'll see that uh, I'll make a lot of red and yellow and orange layers and interchange them with, them with each other. Instead of just making one, I like to layer it up and make soft, soft differences between the layers. So another thing is a cavity map. Uh, in substance, I find that the, the best way to do this is to create 
another layer and instead of a black mask use a bitmap mask and use a curvature map that you've already baked for your model so this will give you an inverted cavity map you, when you add levels to this and invert you'll basically get the same type of uh, cavity mask as you get from ZBrush so I like to change the levels a bit so some of the pores are not as visible because I don't need so many of them and then add a paint modifier on top of that to paint out some of this detail on the lines because on the face you never want like straight harsh lines visible so you want to break them up you want some of it there but you don't want straight lines so you can do that fairly easily and once I'm happy with the way it looks I'll just again change the opacity a bit so this is what it looked like after I painted it out just tone it down a bit So then I added some yellow patchiness and orange patches, orange spots. They're very subtle as you can see, you can barely see them. I hope you can see them on the screen. Uh, my favorite tool for this sort of th thing is uh, a spots brush in Substance Painter. Uh, I like to change the alpha to a dirt stain alpha because it's it is round but it's not too perfect and it also gives you this nice sort of when you drag it gives you a different intensity of the dots and you can again control the spacing of these So the way I like to apply it is just do it in a bit of a figure eight movement so I don't create lines of like those. Just make it subtle. And after that again I added more layers of red which is a bit more pink and something I, I do a lot of when I'm creating a layer for example a red something red I like to create another one which is slightly different hue of red so one will be a bit more orange one will be a bit more pink because when you look at uh, real skin you have a bit of each in there also I added a bit more like a strong yellow color and a yellower red on top and again I painted this with the uh, dirt brush it's basically my favorite brush right now it's looking very patchy but uh, we'll get to smoothing it out later so I'm not worried about that yet so I added another layer of yellow this time a very bright one and uh, to my mask this time I added a, a bit of blur so it's a bit smoother so you can just add a filter on your mask and the blur and you can control the intensity of the blur uh, then I added the yellow tones where the hair would be and the beard and finally to even it all out uh, I created a regular paint layer and when you use a P hotkey, you can pick from what you already painted and just smooth it out, uh, put the flow to very low so it's barely visible. And just with a, either a regular soft brush or again with a dirt brush, you can smooth out all the irregularities. So this is what it looks like once I've done that. And on top I added another cavity map just to highlight some of the detail. And as you can see this is, basically I consider this the base layer of the skin. 
it's still very blurry and when you put it in a marmoset tool bag it looks a bit painterly it's not very detailed but it's a good start and after that we can start detailing your skin uh, the first thing I did was something you would call in traditional painting a splattering so again just a lot of little dots brown dots this time on a separate layer I used the spots brush again for this and I wanted them to be very tiny uh, most of the way I just added a few bigger ones on the forehead where I knew that he would have uh, the sun spots but the idea was to paint these little dots that you can see all over this is by the way these are very young people's faces so you still see a lot of tiny details on them even though they're not aged and this is the skin on an older person's forehead and even if you're painting a black skin you'll still have those little dots so they will be just lighter than the skin and a few darker ones but obviously on a on a Caucasian face you'll see a lot of a lot of it more clearly because the skin is thinner too so and after that I created another layer basically the same thing just a bit of a different hue so you can see this one is slightly different orange it's barely different but it's different and yet another layer of brown freckles and this time I used also a uh, dirt brush again which I think I use most of the time to paint some of them freehand to make them irregular uh, like some of them have very irregular edges and you want to use reference for this of course and uh, after that I added a lot of like little arteries and uh, broken capillaries and spots uh, one of my favorite things to do is to break up the lines of the face so for example on the eyelid has a line here I like to add little dots on there or on the edge of the mouth because it really adds realism I feel because a real person would have these especially if a person has a bit of an older face again another layer of these but in a bit more of a pink tone rather than orangey yellow and some orange discoloration especially on the ears and again a la layer of yellow to just knock it back a bit uh, one more characteristic is the purple under the eyes that a lot of people have discoloration under the eyes so I wanted to add that make him look a bit more tired just with a dark purple color and some veins on the forehead around the nose and uh, when you're painting veins I like to use the soft brush on a very uh, low flow setting and just break it up because veins don't are not at the same level on the skin level of depth they change so they go in and out in and out and uh, from one of like really good uh, traditional painters sorry I learned that when you put more intensity in between the where the veins meet it looks more realistic so if you have like a vein like this and vein like this you want to make it more intense here and then tone it down so it looks better than just making it straight line I added some lighter areas to the skin obviously if you've seen scars they're usually much lighter and also the area in, bet uh, in the corners of the eyes is always very light on most people finally some blue 
and a lot of white spots all over the face. A lot of people have very white uh, bumpy spots on under the eyes as well and uh, in some people they're not as as bumpy but you can also add height to your layer I just painted with color and as you can see throughout the whole thing I paint without roughness so I put the rough uh, roughness up to one and I'm not interested in painting specularity at this point because I don't want to be distracted with that but you can add some bumpiness by just increasing the height on your layer so there is a little bit of normal detail to those spots I think they're called milk spots and finally I added a stubble base which a great tool in Substance Painter is a uh, spot spray brush which basically you can just do that and on this guy I didn't want it to be too visible so I just added one layer but you can also duplicate this layer just press ctrl D uh, put it to multiply for example make it more intense I'm going to clear the mask and then pa paint another layer on top and you could even add a filter on top of this which I think is a cool thing which is a directional filter uh, make it less intense and when you rotate it you can see it changes the direction of the, the little hairs it's a bit fiddly to set it up the intensity so it's not too blurry But on the head, if you have shaved hair, it's usually in different directions. So if you set up a lot of layers with different directions, it would be really cool without using the photograph. So yeah, this is what the skin looks like at this point. The only thing I did on top of that is added a bit more redness on the ears and the nose after checking it in Marmoset tool bag. Uh, I think that it's pretty, there is a pretty awesome workflow between Marmoset and Substance Painter because if you bake your textures in Substance and plug in those textures directly, it will update all the time in Marmoset if you export them. So you see directly what you're doing in your final, view, uh, final renderer. And to even out all the things that I didn't like, I just created another regular layer on top of this and just painted out some patchy areas again with just a regular dirt brush added a bit more yellow uh, one more thing that I really want like to do is zoom out when I'm painting my face so I can see where each area of the face actually is so the model doesn't look like just a brown blob all over And final touch was the additional layer of freckles, again painted with the spots brush. And some face paint. So a cool trick for paint like this in substance, which I think is really awesome. You can add a new layer. And for this I use, I'll use the hard brush so you'll see what happens. So you can paint your detail and then you can add a filter to that layer and select a warp filter. So what it does is it breaks up the edges and you can also in the source parameters change the tiling of that so you can make it more broken up and direction of it change the intensity and on top of that I also like to add a generator which is a dirt generator 
It will apply it to the whole face, so don't worry about that. Well, you have to change the blending mode to multiply, and that way it will only affect the detail that you just painted. And I like to increase the dirt level, so you can see just some breakup in the paint. And if you increase the contrast, it's more like black and white. And I'll remove the in influence of occlusion and curvature from this. And another thing I would do is duplicate this layer, change the color slightly. And again, it's the same thing I just talked about. I keep adding several colors and change the You can randomize it so it's different. And that way you have some variety. What I also did here is I added another layer, another mask to the, I put my paint inside a folder and I added a mask where I used my cavity again the way I did with the cavity map. So some of the uh, some of the pores affected the detail here. And you can also add paint and paint it out in places. So yeah, this is what the face looks like after it's finished. I'm going to show you the eyes as well. Uh, for the eyes, I use a bit of a different method. You can use a photograph. So these are the layers. I'm going to turn these off. So the first thing I did, as you can see, I just made a really messy layer and uh, texture in Photoshop, just grab the photo and uh, create it a little square texture. It has to be square to be able to project it in Substance Painter without distorting it. So this is my texture. And what you have to do is create a paint layer, an empty layer, and then go to your projection tool and in the base color, you select the, layer, the texture that you created. And that way, oh, another thing, you can go into an orthographic view in Substance by pressing F5, F6, it switches between the two. I'm just saying it because I didn't know about it for a long time, <laughs> didn't realize. And you can uh, control the opacity of your stencil in the viewer settings. So you can see it more clearly. Another thing, great thing is you can turn, off the wire, turn on the wireframe. So you see when you're project where you're projecting your image. So basically all you have to do then is paint this on. Once you get out of the projection mode, you basically have your color on top of your eyeball. And after that, what I did is I applied a, a filter, which is a, changes the saturation and the hue of the eyeball. I wanted a, the eye to be a bit more blue. And so basically what I did, I duplicated that layer first. So this is what I got and then I created a black mask to paint out the areas that I didn't want affected by the hue and saturation and then I painted uh, just evened out the painting on the iris uh, when when you're painting the eyes one important thing I think is to think about the limbo ring because on an older person it will be a bit more blurry and uh, less contrasty Whereas if you make it really contrasting, uh, 
it will look like a young person, even if the whole character is old. And also the contrast in colors all over the iris, you want to make it a little subtle, because otherwise the character will feel young. It's like those uh, actors that have a makeup that's old, but the eyes look very young. So it's a bit of a contrast. So I just created another layer of just blue color and put it on screen so to make it a little bluer and added just freehand painting to paint out, uh, to add more color. And I like to pick the color from the head texture so it blends together. Over here it's not that visible, but once you put it with, uh, with a proper shader, the eye looks more blended in with the rest of the face. If it has a bit of an outline that's in the same color as the eyelids, just made the iris, the black part bigger, added some spots and decided to knock back the red a bit because it was too strong. Yeah, and that's what the skin looks like. So yeah, that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> And if you have any questions, you're free to ask. No questions. I'm here, by the way, if you want to talk to them. Oh, I cannot hear you. I think it's something about specularity, but. Oh, yes, I'm going to show you. I can show you what I'm doing after that. So I'll, I'm going to go to the head. And the way I like to paint specularity is a, I'll create a black layer. Uh, so you, as you, you see in the channel, it's completely black. Just to see what I'm doing. And then create an overall specularity without the color. I'm just interested in the roughness material, in the roughness. Uh, so the higher you put the roughness, obviously it's, the less, it's less shiny. So what I like to do if I'm rendering it in a Marmoset tool bag, I just like to figure out my base level first. So I put that, I create that, and then make another layer to just add where the shinier details are. Just paint it freehand with the dirt brush. And then I create another layer and use my cavity to shrink to exclude the pores of the face. I made it blurry, so... Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, this is the roughness channel. So this is what the roughness channel looks like. Yeah, and that's, that's the way I, I paint it. So I paint it later on. I don't worry about it when I'm painting the color. And also for, uh, for example, for the scattering layer, uh, you can use substance very easily to paint where the transmission is by just using uh, a map that's baked in substance by default. So I create a separate layer and So Sub Substance Painter bakes this thickness map for you. And you can put it in the base color. Uh, find it. And uh, change the tiling. By default it's three, so you want to change it to a one. So what you want to do is just apply the levels on top of this and invert it. And then when you adjust the levels, when you press C, you switch between the channels, by the way. So this basically shows you where the SSS will be showing in Marmoset. And you can add a paint on top 
and paint out, oops, paint with black and white. Uh, and just paint where you don't want it. And for the subsurface scattering, you can just create another layer and instead of uh, the thickness map, you can just put in your color map that you bake out. And add a filter, which is the hue and saturation. Just basically bump up the saturation change the hue a little bit. But with the SSS in, in Marmoset Toolback, you have to figure out your colors again because it has a little sw color swatch, which depending on how you set it, it will change your color, change your layer. So you need to experiment basically. Yeah, that's, I hope that helps.